Hello everyone and welcome back to Microsoft Flight Sim 2020. We are here at LFIP by the request of a viewer. We are in the middle of the Pyrenees on the French side of the Pyrenees and I'm gonna fly to Barcelona and you can see the surroundings. We're in the Cessna Grand Caravan. It's a nice lodge. The vehicles are a little bit suspect. They seem to be flying all over the place but what can you do sometimes? And the question is first whether I can take off from this runway. That's going to be an interesting thing. But otherwise, we should have quite a few sights to see. Uh, so again, LFIP. I can't pronounce the airport name. Uh, this seems to be Ballestas. So I can pronounce that part, I guess. Uh, there might be some skiing stuff around. I don't know. There seems to be some stuff. Uh, anyway, let's take off and see what happens. So back in the cockpit, at least for the takeoff. Throttle up and release the brakes. Here we go. Okay, seems to be just good enough. All right, but this will be a sightseeing tour, so we'll take it from outside. Now I don't have the most functional moving map to work with but we can see that we're headed towards the lake and I, I've got Google Maps up. I think there's a city town called Genos and uh, Luderville around here. Arianville. I mean this might be a good uh, landing challenge airport as well. It's sort of like Kirchevel. Except even harder to see if you don't know what you're looking for. There's a little village up there, I guess. They probably send supplies up here by plane. So the caravan is probably realistic. Now let's, uh, I've got real world weather on it. It's gotten all foggy and everything. Uh, I guess I can descend a bit. Nope, oh, too fast. Oh! Wow, it got me on the overspeed much faster than I thought it would. Okay, wow. Some planes, it lets you go overspeed like crazy. This one, it's pretty strict, huh? Okay. The more you know. Um, you know what? I'll do. Uh, I'll do a test landing here first. I think that my viewer probably wanted me to do that. So I mean, I imagine this isn't the hardest plane to land, but. So the airport's around a mile up. Okay, let's turn around. Oh, actually, uh, the airport's far more visible from this direction. I take it back. But okay, I was worried about that little bump there, but it got evened out. This G1000 takes some of the fun out of it, to be honest, with the terrain stuff. Wish I had a bunch of dials in front of me, that's all. Okay. A little bit off. Not like a Kirchevel challenge style landing. Okay, we better keep going, otherwise we're gonna <laughs> fall back down. So, okay, landing achieved, but not not to Kirchevel landing challenge levels or anything. Okay, let me just turn around here. Ooh. Oh, okay, I'll, I'll take this grass area. I'm sure that's totally what it's for. Okay, back inside. 
and throttle up. And on to Barcelona. No more dawdling around. Try to keep the engine in the green here. I saw it flashing red when we go full power, obviously. Turn out, there's the little village again. Uh, try to figure out which way I want to go on this mountain here. Well, I guess this way will do. Alright, uh, I don't know, some of that, it looks like it should be flat, but it's curved, you know? Like there's like a parking lot sort of thing going on there. We'll enjoy these ridges. I'm not going to go too high up. I do want to enjoy the view and everything, so... Yeah. I could have taken one of the smaller planes, but I didn't want to take too long to get to Barcelona. I like to keep the flights to like an hour or so. So outside. To airspeed 144. Ground speed 150. Well, that means we have more than a 3 knot wind, so that's good times. So maybe we have some wind today. That's a good looking place. Up, oh, a uh, little patchwork of settlements down there. I have to say the sim is a little bit choppier than usual. Maybe it's trying to download stuff. I'm surprised at the lack of trees here. There's some down there, but I guess the slopes are too great or something. Well, as you might expect, a landscape like this is a tough thing to get right, and we do see a photo scenery seam there. Uh, I'm being tilted to the left a bit. Okay, that's fine. You know, they don't uh, do flyovers of this area all that much, I suppose, with satellites and all. Let me check on engine performance. Can we get a little bit more out of it? This looks like a glacial valley of some kind. We seem to be in the dry season. Some lakes up there, glacial lakes. Well, we know this plane definitely does not want to be overspeed, so let's hold off on that. So, we, we didn't go along the Pyrenees that much. But that'll give us a varied look at things, hopefully. Not just mountains, endless, endless mountains. It might be that, I know they have wind dynamics around mountains in particular, so maybe that's what we've got going here, rather than anything else. Not sure. Okay, you know, we see some breaks in the clouds here. Okay, uh, more breaks in the clouds. We can see some slopes down there. Let's take a look outside. Not bad. Now, uh, as we left the mountains, our true airspeed is 180 and our ground speed is 180. So I think the additional winds that we we're getting were mountain effect winds and we're back to just not having winds. <laughs> so. That is my uh, theory at the moment. Because I know they added special wind effects around obstacles like mountains and such. Okay, we are roughly halfway through our journey. There's still foothills of the Pyrenees here. We can see where we are on the map there. And taking a look outside, the clouds have cleared. It 
those are nice ridges. There's a valley here, but I don't have my browser open so I can't see where exactly we are. Unfortunately, this map is the least useful map I've ever seen. <laughs> I mean, with, with the exception of having the terrain in the airports, which of course the GPS already has anyway, what we really need is the name of towns, rivers, and lots of roads if it's going to be a VFR map. It's not a very good VFR map. Uh, golf courses would be helpful too, to be honest. Okay, well anyway, I was following this uh, sort of valley down, but I actually need to divert there. You can see sort of the end of the hills over there. Well, so this part is a very nice landscape. So the view outside the window here. Again, it looks sharper in the exterior view, I have to say. Because of the field of view. I mean, if we zoom out, it looks more like that. So if I'm zooming in, it doesn't really correct for that fact. It doesn't, like, render that patch a little bit better or anything. So you could zoom in until it's muddy. So best to stay zoomed out. Cruising right along at 195 knots ground speed. You wouldn't think that the Grand Caravan would be one of the faster planes in the game, but here we are. <laughs> There's so many of the little sm slow planes that uh, it's actually pretty spiffy in terms of speed. So I've got pretty nicely level at 13,000 feet. Who needs autopilot, really? So, considering this a uh, very VFR-friendly sim, the question is, if you had to fly around the world in a plane, which one would you take? I mean, you could take one of the airliners and it'd go by quickly, but you wouldn't see all the details. Like, we're flying high up here. I mean, 13,000 is not that high, but we're clearly not getting all the nitty-gritty details from up here. But then we've got all these small planes. Not all of them have the range to do stuff like cross the ocean. I mean, of course, they're not going to be able to cross the ocean. But, I mean, you can go the Greenland, Iceland, Scotland route for for the Atlantic and then go across the Bering Strait for the Pacific. But you still have to have at least a range of about 800 nautical miles to be safe. So... Yeah, it's an interesting question which plane we would choose for such an adventure. And do we really want to go that slow? I mean... This sort of rippling landscape is always nice. I like that look. The Appalachians are sort of the same way. Maybe we should descend at this point. Certainly looking the part of a classic Mediterranean town. So looking back at that town, which I do not know the name of. At least the VFR map could like have the frequencies of the Vore stations or something. That's an interesting sort of checkpoint sort of thing. Like a toll booth. Let's peer up over the instrument panel and we see a town over there. Plenty of people on this hill over to the left there. Let's take a look outside. <laughs> it's funny how the name of that is... Are, are those players or what? I don't know. But funny how they're obscured by the clouds is all. Okay, so we've got this 
place here. This is probably where the VOR station is that we've got on our map. Nice looking area. There's an airport there. We can at least figure out what airport that is by looking nearest airport list. Probably Aerodrome de Can Morag, I suppose. Oh, maybe it is Sabadell, because the station is S L L, and Sabadell is L E L L, so it's, it's probably Sabadell is the station that we're using. Okay. So, Subadel, everyone. You can see some buildings down there. We see a suspicious point up there on that hill. So, I'll go take a look at that once we pass this station and then we'll come around to Barcelona itself. Now, is my uh, GPS going to automatically see that we've gotten here? Or do I have to move the waypoint manually? I haven't used that functionality of it yet. Okay, it did it. All right, so it saw that we reached that waypoint properly. Just wanted to check. Not a bad airport, looks like. Generic buildings, of course. Oh, did that spike go away? I guess it got uh, resolved. I think that we've got a proper tower there, but we'll double check. Highways here. It's definitely trying to load stuff. Looks like a lot of stuff that needs to be loaded at Barcelona. Right now it's got sort of gen generic spikes over there, but I'm sure those will get resolved too as it figures stuff out. Well, I say sure. I hope it gets resolved soon. Boy, this is a nice little place here, huh? Uh, okay, that, that thing just got weirder. I thought it had turned into a pretty standard looking tower and now it's looking very different. Is it supposed to look like that? I mean, I don't know all the special monuments around Barcelona, to be sure. Maybe it's a very special building that looks like that. It seems unlikely. <laughs> but, I mean, it, it could be a radio mast and that's just how it is. There's a sort of church thing here. Not quite fully rendered. Yeah, I guess that's just a radio mast that looks like that, huh? Pretty prominent. And yeah, it's got textures and all, so I guess I guess it's got observation positions and then it's just a radio mast. That's a heck of a thing. Not the best texturing, but I guess it's just got from photos and all and it's tried its best. And Barcelona. Now, we've got some suspicious looking buildings over there, so we'll take a look at those. But let's go from from north to south here. These buildings look great, of course. It could be at ultra settings, I'll get even better textures, it just hadn't loaded them in yet, you know? I don't know. It's sure using a lot of my network right now. This is like a rare time when it's using a lot of my network, it hardly uses any normally. But now it's basically maxing out network usage or, you know, I've got crappy internet, so. We're talking about 20 megabits per second kind of things. But yeah, it's definitely trying to get scenery. And it's possible that the textures will be improved if I uh, if I let it do its thing. And maybe we've got better towers over there instead of those weird looking ones before, I think. So the waterfront of Barcelona. That's the view to our left. That all looks gorgeous. 
There's a lot of trees on that. Is it a roadway? I mean, it's ought to be a roadway. Lots of trees. Lots of trees everywhere. Look at these trees down here. They really like shady roadways. Which is good, when you think about it. Get hot otherwise. Now those buildings are still looking suspicious, so we'll take a look at them. Maybe they're like that, though. A little harbor here. This is a very interesting complex. Ah, hmm. uh, they've sort of got sort of generic stuff for the cranes. The ATAT -AT or at at kind of inspiration. I get the feeling I don't know about these buildings. I think these buildings are wrong. Yep, I'm gonna have to go with these buildings are wrong. I think the heights of them are just set to... it's like that Melbourne problem. Okay, well let's try and land. The airport's right there. I better just wrap it up here. There's a fellow on the runway there. He's taking off? I'll just get out of his way if he's taking off. Uh, I don't know, I don't even see him. Is he... Oh, he's taking off, yeah. Okay, other runway. I should have gotten clearance and everything. This one looks clear. Oops, a little bit off to the side here, but... Uh, there's wind. Well, not much, actually. I'm just off. Okay, that was soft enough. Okay, well, that's a nice tower. That's a nice tower, alright. Alright, well, anyway. I'll just slowly taxi here. But with this, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this flight. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.